Good afternoon, New York, and the rest of our listeners around the globe. My name is June Stoyer, and I'm the host of the Organic View Radio Show. Our podcast is available on iTunes, Zoom, and you can also visit our website, which is www.theorganicview.com. If you have any questions or would like to connect with us, you can simply post a question on our wall on Facebook, send us a tweet to at The Organic View, or contact me directly at June Stoyer on Twitter. If you'd like to be on the show or would like to find out about sponsorship opportunities, please contact us at questions at theorganicview.com. Today's show is sponsored by Eden Foods, one of the most trusted names in certified organic clean foods. Listeners of the Organic View Radio Show can receive 20% off any regularly priced items, excluding cases. Simply enter the coupon code ORGVIEW when prompted during checkout. That's ORGVIEW. For more special offers, please visit our website at www.theorganicview.com. On today's show, my guest today is Dr. Randolph Mensel. We're going to discuss his latest research titled, Neonicotinoids Interfere with Specific Components of Navigation in Honeybees. So I would like to welcome to the show, Dr. Randolph Mensel. Good evening, sir, and welcome to the show. Hello. Nice to hear you, June. Great to have you on the show. Sir, could you please share a little bit about yourself for our listeners who are not familiar with your work? So I am a neurobiologist and I have been working with honeybees as my favorite animal for quite a long time. And we are interested in the work of the brain of the honeybee and we are interested how they manage to learn so many things, how they build their memory, how they navigate and how they communicate. And usually we do this work in the lab. We look uh, for the neural functions when animals, when bees learn and when they remember and and when they uh, distinguish odors and colors and all of these things. But more recently, I also extended my interest in more the ecological conditions under which the animal lives. With this particular experiment, could you explain why you specifically chose the neonicotinoids, imidacloprid, clothianidin, and thioclopred? So since we are neurobiologists, we were particularly interested in those pesticides which directly work on the brain and change the function of the brain. So neonicotinoids are in fact molecules which interfere with the transmission of signals between nerve cells in a particular way because this name neonicotinoids means that they um, activate a particular kind of molecule, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, and since they are located in those parts of the bee brain which are involved in the highest let me call it cognitive functions. So the way how the, they remember, how they learn, how they navigate, how they communicate, very complex behaviors. And these uh, molecules are essential for these functions. So we became interested and in asked ourselves, what does it mean when these neonicotinoids are picked up, taken up by um, nectar or pollen or dust or any other ways and incorporated into the body of the bee and other insects? And what does it to their particular kind of demanding behavior? So how do these chemicals exactly affect a bee's memory? So we knew already from other people's work that these neonicotinoids at rather low doses. So long before they kill these animals, they change the behavior, in particular the way they learn and the the way they remember. And since uh, the, the finding around in the world, so navigating between the colony and the feeding sites and the new nest sites, and it requires learning and requires memory formation and memory retrieval, we became interested in the question, could it be that very low doses of these pesticides change the brain in such a way that they are not able anymore to perform these navigational tasks? And indeed, this is the case, because we found that uh, not any kind of navigation is changed, but the particular form which requires the use
use of the memory which a young bee, when they, when they just start to become a forager, has established from the landscape. And so this landscape memory is kind of stored in their brain in such a way that it can be used in, for example, during dance uh, communication and when they discover new uh, feeding site. And uh, this particular kind of memory is not available to them in that uh, uh, with this uh, certainty anymore when they are in under the influence of the neonicotinoids. Very interesting. Now, could you share with our audience how did you track the bees? Yeah, we developed or we used a method which has developed by uh, colleagues in England, the harmonic radar, and we use it in a new version which allows us to follow single bees when they travel over distance in the, in the radius of something one, two kilometers. And that is, uh, um, is a necessary um, uh, equipment because uh, if you want to study navigation and you want to uh, understand what kind of knowledge of the landscape are they using to navigate, then you, you need to follow them over their natural flight distances. And that is what is possible with this harmonic radar. So the animals carry a little transponder. This is a passive antennae. It's about 15, 16 millimeters high. Um, it stands up from the middle part of, of the body. And the radar signal is sent out. And this little antennae uh, produces a signal and sends it back to the radar, which allows us to localize the animal. All the way, every three seconds, we get a signal where the animal is. And this allows us to track the animal over these distances. Thank you. What were your team's conclusions from this experiment? We concluded that the three neonicotinoids we have tested, glutathione, and imidacloprid, and tiaclopid, are um, interfering with the homing behavior with a particular kind of navigation. And we also know, meanwhile, that tiaclopid, which is considered to be a rather safe neonicotinoid, is highly dangerous to, to bees, particularly in the context of dance communication. And when it is taken up at very low doses over a longer period of time, and so from, from these uh, data and, and uh, a number of additional experiments we have done, we believe that it is highly risky to expose these uh, to um, these neonicotinoids uh, with an, an, a kind of amount or doses which they can easily pick up from, from a flowering uh, rape oil field or from uh, dust and, and, and from pollen from maize or from, from, from other or sunflowers, for example. And, and uh, given this, this uh, dangerous situation and knowing that even un other pollinating insects like the bumblebees are even more sensitive than the honeybees, it is in fact highly um, risky to continue using these neonicotinoids as pesticides as it does, is done right now. Thank you. I really appreciate the information, and I know many of not only the beekeepers that are out there that listen to this show, but many concerned citizens who are either just learning about the impact of neonicotinoids as well as for people that have been following the interviews that explore the impact are very concerned, and I'm sure everybody will appreciate greatly all of the research that you do and all of the information that you so freely share with the public. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Could you just share with our listeners how they can support your efforts so that you can continue to do this amazing research? Anybody who is interested in our work can look up our website and follow our research. We keep close contacts with uh, beekeepers in our country so far. We do have not extended our connections into other countries other than our immediate European neighbors. But since we are scientists, we are happy if we have interested people follow our uh, research. Dr. Menzel, thank you so much for being on the show today. It has been a pleasure having you on, and I hope that you do come back as you continue to do your research and share your discoveries with us. Okay, thank you, June. And folks, thank you for tuning in. This has been June Stoyer with the Organic View Radio Show. Have a great afternoon, everyone. <laughs>